Hey, what's up guys? Adam here and welcome back to Paper Movies, a novelization book club. We got a special video for you guys today. Now, being collectors of novelizations, we all have gone through the fun aspects of collecting. We could be out book hunting or maybe uh, browsing online and we find a novelization and we're totally surprised that this particular film got a novelization. Or there could be a film that's about to be released soon that we're really hoping gets a novelization. Or, in the case of this video, there is a film that we really wished got a novelization. So today, me, Jeremy, and Matthew put together a list of our personal top five films that we wish had a novelization with some honorable mentions here and there. So we're going to go ahead and get started off with our list. Jeremy, take it away. All right. My top five novelizations that I'd like to see written. First, I want to shout out Prometheus's novelization. I really wish there was an English translation of it officially released by Titan Books. Um, Prometheus was a novelization that was a Japanese exclusive one, which I think is super peculiar. Um, I would like to see an English translation done by Titan Books. And for those of you who are wondering, like, oh, that's weird. Why would you want that? Well, they keep Alien Resurrection um, printed. Like, that's still in print, so that's not far-fetched to put Prometheus on there. Um, next. My number five is a tie between Halloween Resurrection and Halloween H2O. Two very similar films that from the Halloween series that didn't get novelizations. Up until recently, the Halloween novelizations are incredibly well written. The Blumhouse trilogy aside, they're very modern novelizations. They don't they add some stuff, but it's they're not that great. I will say, like, the original four novelizations um are superior reads. Um, especially the first one which we did a uh, paper movies episode on. I also covered just about every Halloween novelization except for Halloween ends as single cuts, which you can find wherever you download podcasts. Uh, highly recommend checking those out. Um, I think I did a pretty good job uh, explaining those and reviewing them. My number four would be we're going back to Halloween again, this time Halloween 5 and 6. Now, why I put these higher is we got a really interesting novelization for Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Not The Curse, Halloween, The Return of Michael Myers. Um, and I thought it was really well written, and especially if you got the same author to write 5 and 6, you could really get the Cult of Thorn trilogy to make sense. I think Nicholas Grabowski, I think was his name, I think he did a really good job with Halloween 4. In fact, he's gone back and he re-released a final chapter that he cut from the original novelization and put it in, in the Ultimate Edition, which I thought was really fascinating and I think he could have incorporated that into Halloween 5 and 6. Uh, anyway, my number 3 has got to be Predators. So there are novelizations for Predator, Predator 2, and The Predator. The, the last one, not really, not very good. Uh, kind of boring. But Predators never got a novelization, and I want to talk about this a little bit. It was in an era where novelizations were basically dead unless your, your name was Star Wars or Star Trek. Basically, unless you were one of those two things, you didn't get a novelization. And recently, novelizations are coming back, hence why we got the Predator novelization and Alien Covenant as a novelization. But I honestly attribute the reason Prometheus never got... Uh, translated to English for the same reason. They just weren't popular anymore. So, to my knowledge, there are there isn't a Predator's novelization. And I think that that is a shame and that 
that movie would benefit from a novelization. Number two, Prey. Prey, I think, is the best Predator sequel we've gotten since Predator 2. It had some dumb stuff in it, but all the Predator sequels tend to have dumb stuff in them. Um, but it shocked me that this didn't get a novelization. I have a theory why. It has to do with The Predator. It's the whole reason Prey went to streaming. Prey is a very cinematic movie, and it was released as a Hulu exclusive, which is bizarre. And uh, quite frankly, I think it would have done well at the box office. And I think it's a little better than Predators, and would have been a more interesting novelization. Plus, you could possibly... Uh, try to fix some continuity with the original Dark Horse comics with the explanation of the Flintlock pistol. I won't get more into that. That's kind of a mild spoiler. Also, explain why this version of the Predator, or the Yaucha, looks different and kind of get into the Predator culture like we saw in Aliens vs. Predator Rift War. Um... I think you could get a really solid novelization out of that. My number one, though, and this is someone who we absolutely love on the channel. He only wrote two novelizations. It's David Morrell, and I would like to see Rambo 4 and Rambo 5 Last Blood novelizations. So it has to be David Morrell, and I'll explain. David Morrell when he signed the rights to First Blood so it could be made into a film in the 70s, he retained the rights to ever write any books with the character of John Rambo in them. Of course, at the time, John Rambo didn't have the first name of John. I mean, they, they were thinking of Michael Douglas and a whole bunch of other people as Rambo. It wasn't for 10 years until you got to see Rambo on the big screen. Well, he was reproached to... He was approached to write Rambo First Blood Part 2 and Rambo 3. And he states in the foreword to Rambo 3, which you can get on Audible, he says the reason they never did a Rambo 4 was due to the fact that novelizations weren't popular anymore and there wasn't a point. Although Sylvester Stallone consulted with him on writing the script for Rambo 4, because Stallone wrote and directed it. Uh, so Rambo 4 is very much in the vein of the novel's Rambo, as opposed to the film's Rambo. And it, you can tell, especially in the director's cut. And Rambo 5 has... I've never finished the extended cut, but would be curious to see what all they would put back in the film because the Rambo novels are very different from the Rambo films. They're not fun in the sense of like mowing down Russian sort of thing. They're, they're more serious. They're, they're very gritty and they're really fast paced books. And I highly recommend Rambo first blood part two and Rambo three. They're well worth your time. And David Morell is getting pretty old now. I think the dude's pushing 80. So we'll probably never see those. It's a shame. Because we'll never get novelizations for those. But anyway, that's my top five list. I cheated a little bit. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Those are all awesome choices. And hey, man, no worries. Actually, in my list, I have a tie between two videos as well, so you're definitely not alone on that. But before we get to my picks, Matthew, would you like to go next? Adam, I would be happy to give my list, my top five list of movies that should have novelizations but don't. Things that I want to read. Um, of course, narrowing this down to just five was very difficult because there are a ton of movies out there that don't have novelizations that should. And I actually, sitting here right now, looking at my list, thinking, I'm going to scratch one of these off and put on something else, because I just I really want to read that as a novel. It'd be great. Um, but anyway, yes, 
narrowing it down to five, very difficult. So, of course, naturally, you got to put in an honorable mentions list. So, you know, that way you can kind of do a top ten unofficial. <laughs> um, but anyway, my honorable mentions. I've got five honorable mentions here. Uh, one that I just added, Speed. Love that movie. It's great. Keanu Reeves, uh, Dennis Hopper, Dan, uh, doesn't matter who else. Jeff Daniels, that's the name I was searching for. Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. We did a watch-along on that on my channel a couple years ago, The Geek's Attic. It was so fun, so tacky. It would be fun to revisit that in novel form. I could just see the cover of it, just all tore up, battered, cheesy. It's all get out. That would be fun. Evil Dead. Would love to get a novelization of Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell, uh, I think that was written by Sam Raimi, was the director. Um, a good classic horror film. Always have to have that on in the fall season in the background at some point. Very creepy. You know, some people laugh at it, but if you remove the comedic stuff, just straight up classic horror. Christmas Vacation, one of my favorite Christmas movies. Would love to get a novelization on that, exploring more of their background of their history with their families the neighbors include a lot more of that cousin eddie that'd be a lot of fun and of course the last one to top off this honorable mentions list ewoks caravan of courage that's right a george lucas project it'd be fun to have that you can also throw that not only on the novelization bookshelf but throw that in your star wars bookshelf too because that would be considered like an expanded universe thing so that would be awesome so now Getting into my top five, the real list here that I was thinking long and hard about. Ghostbusters Afterlife. That movie needs a novelization. The other Ghostbusters, one, two, that thing that happened with the ladies, they all have novelizations. Ghostbusters Afterlife should have received one of those. Disappointed that it didn't. It needs one. Army of Darkness. Of course, an Evil Dead sequel it's the third film in the evil dead series would love to have that uh, it'd be a funny book it'd also explore more of the lore the history kind of get things in order because we have of course evil dead and evil dead 2 the story's kind of changed but i think evil dead 2 is kind of like a reboot of evil dead and then of course evil dead 3 army of darkness um even changes the backstory again so it's like let's just set it in in stone like make a book give us like official business for the evil dead that'd, that'd be neat number three tremors love that film kevin bacon all the other stars in that one i love that film i just i remember watching it as a kid and then growing up just every few years like oh yeah i'm gonna watch tremors it just like it'd be an event every time me and my sister would sit down and watch tremors and then uh of course when it pops up on netflix or the you know one of these uh any of these other streaming sites, gotta watch it. Classic, for sure. Number two, my favorite horror film, Scream. It's a slasher. I love that movie. It's right there. The, the, uh, the change with technology is cell phones are becoming more popular. Kids are starting to get them in their pockets, take them to school. And it's utilized fantastically in Scream. I love that film. It would be great to get a novelization for that. My number one. My number one film that deserves a novelization that did not get it, and the author, I'm going to give this one an author too, because I think that would be a, I didn't do that for the rest, because this kind of gets difficult. A lot of good authors out there, but I want from Wayland Drew, sadly deceased, if we had Big Trouble in Little China, there is so much lore that could be put into that novelization and Wayland Drew does such a fantastic job doing that adding so much to the story giving us um great insight to who the characters are and like the, their belief systems like why they are the way they are why why is the stuff happening right now as it's happening Wayland Drew does a fantastic job one of the best at novelizations of really digging in and giving great detail so quick recap speed Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, Evil Dead, Christmas Vacation, Ewoks, Caravan of Courage, and then the official top five list, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Army of Darkness, Tremors, Scream, and, of course, Big Trouble in Little China by Waylon Drew. Adam, thank you, and back to you. Hey, thanks so much, Matthew. And again, those were awesome choices as well. 
And to be honest, I'm actually kicking myself that I didn't actually think of Tremors first. But with that said, guys, it is now time for me to give you my list of films that I wish had novelizations, starting with my two honorable mentions. Let's do this. So for my first honorable mention, I wish that we had a novelization to the film Jaws 3 or Jaws 3D as it was originally titled because why not? Jaws 2 and Jaws the Revenge both got novelizations. We've even discussed one of those recently and that was a fun discussion to say the least, but I'd be really interested to see Jaws 3 in novelization form and you know, it'd be kind of cool if they added photographs from the film inside the book and, you know, you can even make it with a 3D effect, you know, just include the novelization with some 3D glasses because, you know, yeah. <laughs> now, my second honorable mention is for one of my favorite werewolf stories, and that is for an American werewolf in London. I honestly think this movie is classic and still am sad that we do not have a novelization for this one. I did a frantic search on the internet to see if there was possibly one and there is not. The closest that I found is that they recently released a screenplay for this film but no novelization. So I really wish we got one for this film because you know it's a great mix of both horror and humor and I would just be really interested to see how this would be portrayed on page. But with that said, it is now time to move on to my top five films that I wish had novelizations. As most of you know, I am a big fan of comic book films. I love collecting the novelizations for them. And so this for my top five is going to be all themed around comic book films. Coming in at number five, and again, I'm actually tying one on this one. I wish that we had a novelization to both Superman 1 and Superman 2. I have looked, there is none. They actually do have stories that are set within that Superman universe, but they are not novelizations. I actually do have those books though. They do have novelizations for Superman 3 and Superman 4, A Quest for Peace. I mean, heck, they even have a novelization for Supergirl, which I do own, but sadly, no novelizations for Superman 1 and 2. I mostly do want them though, just so that way I can have a full collection of all of those films in novelization form. For my number four, I wish that we had a novelization to the film Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. This film is actually a guilty pleasure of mine. I did enjoy it. I do think it was a little trippy and a little out there, but hey, nonetheless, I did enjoy it. And we do have a novelization to the first Ghost Rider film, so there shouldn't be really any reason why this one didn't get a novelization, because I really do wish that we did get one, because I kind of want clarification if this film is actually a direct sequel to the first one, or if it's just its own other Ghost Rider film that just happens to star Nicolas Cage as Ghost Rider. For my third pick, I wish there was a novelization to the film The Amazing Spider-Man. I really actually enjoy the Andrew Garfield films, and Andrew Garfield is my favorite Spider-Man of the three, and I'm just sad that we didn't get a novelization to this one. We did get a junior novelization to The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and of course we got a novelization to all three of the Raimi films. I'm just really sad that we did not get a novelization for this one, because again, Garfield's my favorite Spider-Man. The Lizard is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. So just, I kind of feel like it's a missed opportunity. Now moving on to number two, I wish we had a novelization to the film Logan. This is actually one of my favorite comic book films of all time. Hugh Jackman's performance was great. I love the story. I love the era that it takes place in where it's in this dystopian-like era where the X-Men and mutants for that matter are all but extinct. And I just really wish that we could have gotten this in book form. And I really wish that we could have gotten maybe more insight into like all of the destruction that took place for the mutants and the X-Men. just I think it would have just been an epic novelization. And so for my number one pick, I wish there was a novelization to the film, The Joker. The Joker was an intense film and I thought it was just very well made. Uh, it was a psychologically thrilling character study. The performances were great. Uh, Walking Phoenix was phenomenal. And I really love that they remained true to the whole Joker character trait to where uh, his origin is multiple choice because sometimes he remembers it this way or remembers it that way and I really would have liked to see how that would have been portrayed in book form because I think it would be very compelling and again I just think that a film like that really deserved a novelization. 
And there you have it, guys. Those are our top films that we wished had novelizations. This was a very fun video to make, but as Matthew put it, narrowing down our top picks was a bit of a chore, but hey, you never know. We might make another video at some point where we add more films that we wish had novelizations to the list. But guys, thank you all so much for checking this video out. And of course, we would be very interested to read what films you wish had novelizations. So be sure to leave those down in the comments below if you'd like. But guys, thank you all so much for all your continued support. If you enjoyed the video, then please be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to our channel and you're a big fan of reading and collecting novelizations as we are, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. Guys, thank you all so much and be sure to stay tuned for our first discussion coming this March. Have a great one, guys.